This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The next section of this chapter discusses losses. So let's go through the rules and then we'll apply those rules to an example. So where capital losses arise, they are set against capital gains in the same tax year. We've seen that already with the computation that we did where we had the two profits and um, a loss and they were netted off. So they are set off to the maximum possible extent. Now you cannot restrict to avoid wasting that annual exemption. It's again all or nothing. If there are insufficient gains to set off against capital losses in the year they arise, any unrelieved losses would be carried forward. So say, for example, we had gains, net gains, two assets of 10,000 and a loss of 12. Then we have surplus losses. We've then wasted or lost our annual exempt amount, which cannot be transferred or carried forward. And that loss of 2000 then would be carried forward to the next year. So if net gains do arise, then the annual exempt amount is then deducted from any gains, which we saw in the previous example. If the AEA is larger than the gain, the remaining AEA is lost. It cannot be transferred. And losses brought forward that are unused obviously are then carried forward. So let's have a look at an example. We have here example number six, and we have two individuals. We have Fiona and Jane. They both had capital gains and losses in 22-23 and in 23-24, as you can see in the question. Uh, Fiona had gains of 10 and losses of, sorry, gains of 15, losses of 10, in 23 24 and then gains of 17 and a loss of 4 2. Jane is the other way round she had gains of 7 losses of 10 and then again in 23 24 of 15,000 with a loss of 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the model answer for this so that you can see how that the answers need to be set up. So let's look at the example answer. Uh, we'll deal with Fiona first. So you would remember that in 22-23, she had a gain of 15 and losses of 10. So she has gains, um, net gains um, in the year of 5, which are covered by her AEA. And there are no losses to carry forward. And then in 23-24, she had gains of 17, uh, losses of 4,200 AEA of 6,000 giving her taxable gains. So you can see how the losses are dealt with there, just netting them off. And obviously if you do the computation where all the gains and the losses are all together, then that will happen naturally. Just one thing, if they're asking you to do the same thing twice in an exam, then the answers will be different. Okay, because if you could do it once, why would they ask you to do it again? All right. So if they ask you, so this situation we have here, Fiona's fairly straightforward, gains, losses, what's the situation? Now, Jane's situation must be different. So if you're asked to do something twice and you end up with the same result or the same answers, same sort of situation and process that you're going through, just step back a moment and ask yourself why. It's just something to, to bear in mind. So Jane had gains in the year of 22-23 of 7,000 and losses in that year of 10. So the gains for that year, you always write in nil. So she has no, her AEA has been lost and she has losses to carry forward to the next year. So then we can see how that works in the next year. So she had gains in that year of 23 in 2023-24 of 15,000. She had losses of two, which gave her net gains for that tax year of 13,000. Then we had 
AEA of 6,000, giving us net gains at the end of that situation of seven with losses brought forward. So you can see that they've been used in full. Okay, so let's go back to the chapter. So the next aspect that we're going to look at is what happens when we transfer assets between husbands and wives. Now, these are connected persons. And if you remember earlier in the chapter, we talked about arm's length transactions. So anything that takes place between husbands and wives is, it says here, is deemed, in other words, it's been decided to take place at a value that would give rise to neither a gain nor a loss. Okay, um, This is not an election, it talks about it here, it is a rule. So it, whatever happens doesn't really matter, any actual proceeds. And it's called, it says there, a no gain, no loss transaction. That's the technical term, that's what the examiner and the marker will be expecting you to say. So essentially, the transferor is deemed to make the disposal at cost and the transferee, the person who receives it, so that's the giver and that's the person who receives, okay, at the original cost. So it is advantageous if you've got a husband and a wife where um, one has significant gains the other has no gains, not using their AEA, perhaps not even using their basic rate band. So it could be taxed at 10 or 18 percent of its residential property. So all of that would need to be um, planned with the couple to ensure that they are both using basic rate bands and AEA. So it might be wise to transfer some assets around so that this one isn't suffering tax at, say, 20 and 28 percent not having an AEA to use against certain assets, no losses, all sorts of things. You just need to bear in mind and bring that back together. So let's have a look at example number seven. So here we have Gollum who bought a ring in 1995 for 12,000. So that's our cost. He transferred it to his civil partner so that's a no gain, no loss transaction in December 2023 when the market value was 20,000. And he then went on to sell that for 20,000. Now, if this rule wasn't in place and it was transferred at market value, which is the figure that you would use for a connected person's transaction, then Frodo's would be proceeds 20K cost in inverted commas of 20k no tax no gain so Gollum bought the ring transferred it under the beneficial rules of no gain no loss Frodo then sold it for the exactly the same amount market value nobody's paid any tax so while the no gain no loss transaction situation is beneficial you then somebody somewhere has got to pay the increase the increase it's gone up by 8,000 that increase has to be paid for by somebody and basically it will fall on Frodo. So he won't use the market value. He will use that figure, the original cost, which means that will be his gain. And that's how you would deal with that. Now, part disposals. Part disposals are where, normally to deal with land, are where you, you sell part of it as the logic dictates. And it will give rise to a chargeable gain in the normal way. But you've got a problem because you know what the proceeds are because you've sold part of the land, so you know what that is. But what's the cost? Because you've only sold part of it. So how do you know which bit of the cost you are to include in your computation? So we have a rule. This is the rule. The cost of the whole asset is multiplied by a fraction to compute the allowable cost, this figure here that we need to have, of the part that you have now sold. So it's A over A plus B, where A is the gross proceeds of the part disposed of, and B is the market value of what remains 
of the asset at the time. So, and it'll be given to you in the question. So, you own a large piece of land, 100 hectares, and you sell 40 of them. So, you've got 60 of them less. So, you'll have the market value for that and the proceeds figure for that. So, let's have a look at an example. You can see that in reality. Stanley owned 10 acres of land, original cost. And he's gone and sold two hectares of land for 16,000. And then it's told us what the market value is of the rest of that land. So what does that look like? So we know what the proceeds are. The proceeds were 16,000. Now, again, as I've said so many times, you should be able to do this now without me having to remind you, but I am going to remind you every time you do a working please show everything it's not about the answer it's about the process so we're looking at a over a plus b times cost so we know that the cost originally was twenty six thousand and we know that this has got to then be a is 16 over 16 plus and they tell us that 34 So this is the rule, and we've shown the rule. We've then added the numbers to the rule, and we're then going to do the calculation. So 16 over 50 times 26,000 comes to 8,320, giving us a gain of 7,680. You won't get marks for that. You're going to get marks for all this on the left hand side. So that's what's really, really important. Let's move on to the next bit, which is chattels.